flow is such a big topic, I'm going to speak to it a little bit more. There's some interesting things of flow that cause confusion. For example, students that are dealing with anxiety or depression, panic attacks, there's one common element to all of them, and that is sleep. When your mind is anxious, you either can't get to sleep, or you can't stay asleep, or both. And if you live in that anxious mode enough days and nights, weeks, and your brain's not getting the sleep and the rest it needs, eventually the brain's going to shut down into a depression. And a depression isn't a sadness. Depression means the, the chemicals in your brain are depressed and they, they shut down. And it's a type of a protective mechanism to have you slow everything down. And in that depression, all the joy is gone from life. And you don't want to do the things you normally do. Memory is definitely an issue. Uh, when I went through depression, I couldn't remember the names of students in my class or teachers I had taught with for years. I'd walk right by them and I knew who they were, I knew things about them, but I couldn't remember the names. So the depression makes people have trouble sleeping. So what teenagers tend to do, many of them, is they'll grab some electronic device when they can't get to sleep or wake up in the middle of the night and can't, can't stay asleep. And so their parents will come in and say, well, they're on their computer or their phone or something all night, or they're so addicted to this game, this video game. And as we talked about more with the students, the game wasn't the problem. It could be adding to the problem, but the problem was they couldn't get to sleep or stay asleep. And when they played the game, their mind was so focused on the game that it wasn't focused on their worries. It wasn't focused on their regrets. So they had to be totally in the present to play the game. So trying to explain to parents that, well, I don't think the game is the problem. Let's talk about sleeping and sleep patterns. And yes, they shouldn't have their computers on an hour or their phones on an hour before they go to bed. And yes, going to your phone or laptop or iPad when you wake up in the middle of the night is probably the worst thing you can do to get to sleep. But understanding that it's the symptom of what's going on versus the actual cause of it. And realizing, and, and then talking to students about it, that students get that. And instead of the parents saying, stop playing those such and such, such games, you're, you're, you know, that's why you're not getting up in the morning, that's why you're missing school, that's why your grades are dropping. Now it's a discussion of, you know what? We understand that the games aren't helping us get back to sleep and sleep is so important to have a healthy brain then it becomes a matter of scheduling when you can do the games so they don't interfere with your sleep. Other ways to flow, there's just, there's just so many. Um, I have a jet ski. When I'm on my jet ski, that's, that's just absolute flow heaven for me. Um, another really cool way to flow is helping other people. When you're helping other people, what you come to realize is there's people out there that aren't as well off as you are, and that also helps you to kind of move your way out of um, feeling so much angst about yourself and say, yeah, there's other people out there struggling, and uh, I can help them. And that puts your mind into a more uh, positive frame of mind. Um, what are some ways that you flow? I'd love to hear other people's methods of uh, flowing and how they keep their self in the present moment and uh, turn off their angst so they can uh, enjoy the moment and be a human being. That's all for now.